Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation with Tom Merritt and Leo Laporte, episode 52, recorded May 9th, 2012, Loic Lemur. Triangulation is brought to you by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it, right from your desk. To get our special offer, go to Stamps.com now, click the radio microphone, and use the offer code TRIANGULATION. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. It's time for Triangulation, the show in which Tom Merritt and I grill a unsuspecting member of... <laughs> well, they suspect a little bit, because we had to call him on Skype. <laughs> An unsuspecting member of the Digirati... And find out what it is that makes these special people so special. I'm really pleased that we can have Loic Lemur join us uh, today. I first became aware of Loic uh, when he did a thing called Seismic, which was a startup that you did about five years ago, I think. And it, it, Originally, it was about video comments on blogs and things like that. And in fact, I think that's the first time I ever saw you, Loic. Welcome to Triangulation, by the way. Thank you, Leo. It was, a, it was a, a comment, a seismic comment. And I said, this is an interesting fella. And then I saw you riding around a Segway. And I said, this is a really interesting fella. And then the more I know about you, the more I realize you're fascinating. So, let's, so I thought this would be a great chance for us to sit down and do something we don't usually do. Loic says, I thought I was going to be on a Twit panel or something. No, you're our subject today. You're the news today. You're the news. So first of all, my condolences. I know you weren't really, uh, you're, you're a Sarkozy f- uh, supporter. Oh, is that how you start today? Wow. Um, yeah, I was trying to keep quiet on, on this. It's been five years as well, but if you start <laughs> with me, that's only fine. Yes, I was, um, I was in, uh, in the social media campaign of a former uh, president, um, Nicolas Sarkozy, five years ago. And I call this my internship in politics. It, it, it was like basically uh, three months of my life. And it is amazing how sticky Someone like Yossi Vardy would say sticky like um, <laughs> is, <laughs> is politics to your life because everybody see you start see, the show I just with this, it's right? the first thing I said which we does this doesn't def- I mean it's it's incredible I am 39 um, but it's three months of my life right that a lot of people you know refer to but uh, I'm not ashamed you know I what happened here I can tell you what happened I um, I, I, I so I, I created five startups um, and. In, I had sold one, and in between two adventures, I was before Seismic, I decided I would I could probably be a better citizen by, um, um, you know, t- not trying to get involved, but just saying loudly. Because in France, here you have bumper stickers, right? I vote for Obama. Or, right, right. You know, there you hide it. You, you never don't... see a, bump, a political bumper sticker in France. Ever. Right. People- yeah, people hide it. They don't, you know. And, and so I, I, I blogged it. I said, okay, so here is who I'm going to vote for, Um, and that was Nicolas Sarkozy, because I think he's the most compatible with entrepreneurship, and I want France to be a country of entrepreneurs. I think we live in a a society where people need to learn how to create their jobs and to learn how to, you know, find a job. And that that was, for me, the best candidate. I blogged that, and they invited me. They um, invited me to do a podcast with him that got tons of, you know, traction, and uh, so I got a one-to-one interview with him, uh, which was pretty fun to do uh, with like crappy mics and you know crappy cameras. <laughs> a podcast, uh, a first, <laughs> you know, in two thousand six. Yeah, right? that's yes, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and from that they said, hey, but uh, you know, if you like us, why don't you join the team? And I, here 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 I was uh, suddenly in charge of social media, uh, talking to a thousand bloggers every day, coordinating like basically an army. That's how it works, you know. Um, and I, that was a great experience. And after three months when he won, um, I decided I wanted to get back to entrepreneurship and I completely quit. And you can't find maybe one or two tweets in five years, no more, anything political uh, ever. But it's still there. So well, you weren't involved in this recent election uh, at all? No, I'm in San Francisco for five years. Yeah. I moved here and I... Uh, 
uh, I decided I was not. There are many things I didn't like about politics. I'm not getting in politics today, by the way, but many things I'm, I didn't like about politics in general. For example, the fake promises and, and, and so on that they all do. Um, and I, I, business was better for me. And uh, also getting into results in business, whether you succeed or fail is another story, but getting things done. You launch a product, boom, you can do it in six months, it's done. It's, it's, it's you know, pop, you can feel it. You can do it. In politics, it's more like promising things that uh, you don't know if they're going to happen. I, I, I wasn't, that wasn't for me. It's a lot of compromise, a lot of... Well, you know, the reason I brought it up is because Sarah Lane would never have met the president of France if it weren't for you. So <laughs> I, th I think that we have a, a debt of gratitude. I stayed back because, like you, I don't want that stuff to stick to me. So I just watched while Scoble and, and everybody. Because when we were at Le Web in December, we, uh, we, the president gave us a speech. Uh, we got to go to the, 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 the uh, palace, the Elysee Palace, which is incredible. And they had a, a band. It was beautiful. It was amazing. It was an amazing experience. And Sarkozy comes up to you and he's like, oh, it's great to see you, Loic. And at least I think he was saying that. It was in French. So I don't know. He could have been saying, you jerk, you lost me the election. First president not to win re-election since the 80s. Wow. Because he met Sarah Lane? Because he met Sarah Lane. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't want to, you're right. I don't want to talk a lot about politics. Although I think it's interesting because here you are an entrepreneur. You do the LeWeb conference. You're going to do it in, in uh, London in June. We'll talk a little bit about that. But you've been doing it for some years in, uh, in Paris. Eight, sure. Eight yep. years in Paris. We've been the last two years and it's been so much fun and so great. We're, you know, we love covering it. But, uh, but what was interesting about it is it really seemed like you were trying to stimulate entrepreneurialism in Europe and in France particularly. And there's a lot of kind of structural things in France and Europe in general that make it difficult. It's just not the same as entrepreneurialism here. And, and as a result, uh, innovation uh, lags here. Did you go, I'm just curious, did you go to the Ecole Polytechnique? <laughs> no, I, I, I graduated from, uh, from uh, one of our grandes écoles, which is the equivalent for business. So it's called HEC. And it's, it's very French. Uh, it's, uh, it means hautes études commerciales. And basically for our system, which we call Grandes Écoles, is, uh, you know, Polytechnic leads the engineers. And, uh, and the one I graduated from leads the, uh, the business, you know, kind of like... Well, and the uh, reason I bring it up is because that's one of the structural things I think it makes it hard. There, there's a very rigid structure in France, isn't there? You get tracked early on. And uh, if you, if you, depending on which of the facts you go to, you become that person. And there's not a lot of room for fluid. There's not a lot of fluidity. It seems. Uh, I, I, so that's interesting because my, my oldest son, since 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 um, we're talking about uh, me personally here, <laughs> yes, I have a, I have a 17 years old. So uh, as, I started early. As I do have I. An 11, Arthur, his name is. Yeah. I have an 11, 14, and 17 years old. Yep. And my 17 years old is uh, switching into, basically trying to switch into U.S. college. We're all at the Lycée Francais here in San Francisco because we didn't know if we would stay or not. Now we know we're going to stay. We're green card holders, uh, maybe who knows one day, passport holders. Um, and and he, he, I find the college in the U.S. actually starting earlier than in France because uh, it's, you know, super young to be deciding in which, That's you know, true. college. Right? It's very That's early. That's true. Yeah. And it's also the case that uh, your def look at Facebook. They define your profile by, I know it started this way, but by Harvard or Princeton right. or, you know, stat, right? So I actually think in, in that respect, it's, it's probably very similar to U.S. that if you want to go to the top, you need to get into the best schools or college. Um, but uh, he, he, most of the students in those schools don't really want to become entrepreneurs. That's what I've been trying to help with the web. Yeah. I think that there is a little difference because you might go to Harvard, but you might go in a lot of different ways and you might enter Harvard wanting to be a businessman and leave Harvard being a dentist. And, and all of that's possible. And I don't know if it's quite so flexible once you get into the – if you go True. to a, a cold polytechnique, you're going to be an engineer, right? I mean – yeah, pretty much. Or you're going to lead one of uh, uh, public companies or you're going to, yeah. It's I read much... somewhere there's something like 80% of all the CEOs in France, right, come from like two schools. Yeah, it's uh, it's generally uh, one of those. Yeah, one and those my, my, all, all my friends, well, yeah, I don't know about the exact statistics, but most of the leaders in the business 
uh, there are, are from right. one of those two schools or right. one of the top like and most of my friends were uh, going to the McKinsey and the uh, GP Morgan and, and the large companies um, and are not where let's say the French system doesn't really train for entrepreneurs I think and uh, um, the uh, there is at HSC the school from uh, which I graduated from an uh, HSC entrepreneur it's called it's a entrepreneurship course which is really good oh, which I took neat. Um, but it's a minority. Uh, it's, I would say, like probably less than, than 10, 5% of the students just barely interested in that. Um, and, and that's, that, that's what the web is all about is to, you know, promote entrepreneurship. But you knew you wanted to be an entrepreneur early on. My, uh, father and grandfather were entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, yeah, I think I have this in the blood. I would, I would probably, I, not, no disrespect for, employees worldwide in large companies, you know, absolutely not. Uh, but I would probably prefer to be self-employed, um, selling cheese, <laughs> Having a che che wine and cheese shop. What's cinema. wrong with that? Sounds great to absolutely. me. Louis raclette shop. <laughs> maybe, you know, but, but maybe. Louis has whatever. funny because he, I have never seen more posts of rich, delicious, fattening food in my life than on his path. <laughs> And look at this guy, and he runs marathons, and he's like... It's the French diet. I guess it's for the French paradise. He's French. Whatever he eats is the French diet. So, and, and after all, entrepreneur is a French word. So uh, I don't know why we should be surprised that there are entrepreneurs in France. Uh, yeah, no, we shouldn't be, uh, we shouldn't be surprised. And, and there are many would-be entrepreneurs in France, millions. Yeah. Um, it's just about helping them. Um, getting, you know, getting, so financing is an issue. We can talk about that. But so, uh, there are less business angels in, in France and in Europe in general than right. in the U S for sure. But the, the French people are really entrepreneurial. They, 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 they really want to start. I, I get emails every day. So I know, um, to, to help them. But, uh, uh, the problem is you don't find like easily the initial, you know, angel money. And, uh, that's, that's what the web is trying to help. You get in one room, you get the angels. You get the VCs, you get, of course, the entrepreneurs, the would-be entrepreneurs. And also what I try to do is to get the best of Silicon Valley, uh, which is like the grand école of the world for, uh, for uh, internet and tech entrepreneurship, right? That's where most of the things happen, um, to take them there. So having Jack Dorsey or Katerina Fake or, um, you know, Eric Schmidt last year come and address that audience, they get inspired and then they want to create a company. And my, my pride really is that the web helps them succeed it's um it's a platform so for for success and uh there is nothing you know more um I, better i think than than uh seeing entrepreneurs succeed and create based on the meetings they've done at the at the event i'm gonna make it political again that's why perhaps francois Hollande is not maybe the best person <laughs> to uh, run france <laughs> look i <laughs> let me put it this way the guardian said it's he's he's in charge of start down. He's going to call it the start down nation, not the start up nation. Well, look, um, I I'm trying to avoid that conversation. But since you, <laughs> OK, <laughs> we'll move no, no, on. Okay. We'll okay. move no, on. Just just one fact, Leo, is one of the fuel, a key success factor and tool of a startup is stock options. Right. Right. And. And a company all the way to Apple and Amazon. I was just reading another story on, on Jeff Bezos last, last week where amp, amp, they don't get very big salaries there. Right? They get paid, you know, not, not very high, but they get amazing stock options and everybody's happy and they kill themselves because they feel right. they're part of the company. Right, right. right. And so Hollande wants to tax them 75%. Uh, just, you know, one thing, right? And so if you, if you tax stock options 75%, you're never going to get a startup ecosystem that right. thrives. That's it. You know, just one example here. Well, you mentioned also venture capital from the same article. French uh, VC invested 13, 13 euros per capita per company last year compared with $93 in the U.S., $110 in Israel. And where is there more startup and innovation than anywhere in the world? Israel. Yeah, you know what I don't like with this uh, campaign is that it's basically been against uh, what I felt is a lot against success. 
you know, what's wrong? And I, I pay a lot of taxes and I have no problem with that. Absolutely not. But 75% That's might a little be much. A little much right? That's a little much. Is that why you left France? Why did you leave France? No, I didn't leave France. Well, first, you don't leave France for tax reasons. Because you, you still pay. <laughs> I pay more in, no, I pay more in California. Yeah, okay. You pay well, more tax no in California than you pay in France? He, uh, there are, we can get into that if you like, but they are uh, they basically offset. Like I still pay a lot of tax in in France with uh, right. my co- with my company. The web is French, so yeah. I, I'm actually still paying. <laughs> yeah, this is getting very personal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't mean to, to disclose uh, your tax records. I just no. I, I, no so why I, did I, you? I, all right. Why did you leave France? No, why, here's, here's Mr. Lemur? Why no. did you leave France? <laughs> I answer this to you in a second, but the, um, the the thing with tax, I think it's important. If you if you if you go to seventy five percent and you don't leave enough room for business angels to be business angels, uh. meaning to have the investment to put it back on startups, uh, it 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 actually goes against the startup ecosystem and the environment. I'd rather much more. Uh, the president and, and the French government to push to have thousands of more business angels invest in those startups, which in turn will create jobs, right? So it's right. a whole circle that they don't see very well, I think. But I, I hope I'm wrong. We'll see. Well, so now, that was to, the thing that impressed me about Sarkozy was he seemed like he was really promoting. And he did some things that I think people got upset about, like com- criticizing the 35-hour work week. Uh, now, on the other hand, one thing I like about Hollande, he's gonna, Hollande seems to be dropping Hadoopy. They're now talking about dropping uh, the uh, three strikes law in France. There is, there is good and bad in you know, and bad. Yep. Look, we, uh, what, what Sarkozy did very well is he, he excluded the investments in startups from the wealth tax there. And someone That's like, smart. Xavier, yes, someone like uh, Xavier Niel, who is the founder of Free, you know, the ISP there, that, uh, that is huge, invested in hundreds, if not thousands of startups. And that's what we want. So I think that's, what, you know, a very, very good measure. Now, why I left France? Um, I can't get in, out of politics. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you said it sticks to you and you were right. It does. Okay, well, you're helping that. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, the, <laughs> the, uh, there goes my no. invitation to the web. Oh, well. <laughs> it, it, it's just... Um, that uh, but I wanted to be closer to the center, Silicon of Valley, I, of what I do, right? Yeah, and it's it's a dream of mine since I graduated from that school. I should say that we talked about to be you know in that industry, and I, I I I it's my passion. I hang out with you know friends and you and everybody here, and um, I, you can succeed in France. I, I created several startups. I sold some of them. I. I, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm really happy. I was very happy there. You You've can done very, very much well. succeed. Yeah, yeah. And um, and Xavier Niel, I was just talking about him. Is is immense, immensely more successful in France. You have you have many entrepreneurs who are, which are great. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is that here you're in between. Like I have Twitter right there, uh, four blocks away. I I can see yeah. from here, and I'll be back in politics myself. You'll see. I can see from here the Zynga building. <laughs> Uh-huh. Um, and Zynga building, you know what? Created three and a half thousand jobs in three years. Yeah. So what do you want? You see what I mean? That's yes. politics again. But like here you can feel that energy, that atmosphere. You, you go to a restaurant and you, you bump into, uh, uh, you know, Dick Costolo. And, and you go, to, you, you, I can drive to Facebook in 20 minutes and I may having lunch there actually tomorrow. Last week, I, I hang out with Kevin Seistrom of Instagram who just sold to, to Facebook. And I'm really proud that he was actually a speaker at the web way before he did that. So see, it's, uh, this is what I like. I'm just with you guys. You know, I, I feel like at, at, I'm at the center of the engine myself and I like hanging out. There are a few things I, I like less than Paris uh, here. I miss the great, great restaurants. Don't tell anyone. But hey, but is- Joel Rubichon in Las Vegas is better than the one in Paris. Um, I have been to both. I like both, but the, the Robuchon L'Atelier... Yeah. In, uh, in Vegas. Yes, Magnifique. and thank you, Leo. Thank you, Leo, for going there every month. <laughs> and, and, uh, put- and sending him pictures. <laughs> yes. Oh, the uh, foie gras was really good today, Loic. <laughs> you, you're killing me, Sam, because you're going more often than me. You're, you're like you're my friend, it's my, my non-French friend who likes the, fr- the most French You know what? French it's my new favorite restaurant. I just love it. And I will go in Paris, of course. But uh, it's, have- it's really good in Vegas, too. Well, you, you took to us to- there. So um, 
I want to talk about startups. God, we do so much. And Loic has told us not to use anything in his uh, Wikipedia article because it's all wrong. So, no, Loic, this, say that. this is an opportunity for you to correct any errors in there, and our amazing Twit community will do it for you. So you don't have to, you know, it's, it's not done to touch your own page. So anything that's wrong in there, you can tell me, and we, we will fix it for you. I, I would say the, actually the French one is uh, generally very wrong just because of that um, – Three months involvement in politics. Ah, uh, but a lot of friends. <laughs> How interesting! So the French one is very different. The French one is totally different and uh, was I didn't check recently. I don't spend my time there, but um, was very very wrong. Um, and actually, it was corrected by the community. Uh, just I mean, people were trying to, you know. Uh, it says went, it says after the election of Sarkozy, you announced you're leaving. <laughs> Yeah, see, that kind of stuff. And I've never touched my Wikipedia page, ever. I wouldn't do that. But That's pretty like, bad. That's, I mean, maybe that was technically the, roughly the same time frame, but I don't think that connecting the two like that was quite right. It's the way it's, uh, it's done, yeah. Um, anyway. No, it, it's actually pretty accurate in English. It, it just misses things and, and, and stuff. But well, I know some things about you no one knows about your commercial airplane license. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Seismic and the amazing pivot. It. And unfortunately, recently you just laid off some people at Seismic, so we're going to ask you about what's going on there. I know that must have been hard, um, but you did it in a good way. I he like did that it story. in an amazing way, didn't yeah. he? I thought it was really impressive. If you have to do it, that's the way to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually taking notes. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> did you hear John? Oh, <laughs> More with Louis Kmomer coming up on Triangulation in just a minute. This portion of Triangulation brought to you by Stamps.com. You see, when I mail those layoff notices, I'm going to be using stamps from Stamps.com. That way I don't have to go to the post office. No risk going out the door and getting stoned. Uh, no, Stamps.com is great. You don't have to go to the post office anymore because, believe it or not, it's completely legal for, <laughs> for you to print U.S. postage right from your own computer and your own printer, as long as you're using stamps.com. You don't need a postage meter. You don't need special links. I don't even know how Pitney Bowes stays in business. This is Why would you get a postage meter when you can just do this? Go to stamps.com and find out all about their services, Mac or PC. Uh, let's see, what should I tell you? There's discount. Post office loves stamps because it, you know, it, it, it relieves them of some, some, uh, you know, some work. I guess would be the word. Uh, I don't want to disparage the post office, but if they like it, if it you makes know, it easier, on it's them. easier. Yeah. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. So, twenty-one percent discount on uh, express mail, fifteen percent on priority mail. They fill the forms out. If you're sending internationally, I bet Loic sends a few things internationally once in a while. You know what a pain it is. You get the international mailing mail order thing, and you got to get the fill out the. It does it all for you. You don't have to go to the post office. In fact, you can do everything you could do at a post office. You can do it with stamps.com. And the mail carrier comes to you and picks it all up. So you don't even have to get up and bring the, the package in. Uh, I would love you to try stamps.com. And we've arranged a no-risk trial that is actually very compelling. If you visit stamps.com, you'll see that $80 offer. You might say, oh, that's cool. Don't go for it. Click the radio microphone in the upper right-hand corner. And you'll get this page when you enter the uh, offer code triangulation. See, that $80 offer went to $110. $55 in postage coupons, free digital scale, $5 supply kit, and a four-week trial. All for shipping and handling on the scale only. It's a really good deal, and I can get it for you right now if you go to stamps.com and use the offer code TRIANGULATION. Click that microphone. Don't use the basic offer because we want to get you more free postage. Stamps.com. I love that. So we were talking, Luik, about uh, startups, and you came to Silicon Valley because that's where it all is happening. But it's not like it was designed. It wasn't a Disney park for startups that someone created and said, okay, startups all come here. It just sort of organically happened. So it, it, it seems quite a trick to try to make that happen somewhere else. What do you think the conditions are that you need to create? to get that to happen? Because I've talked to a lot of folks, not only from France, but people from England, uh, Germany, who want to do the same thing. They are like, we need to have that atmosphere. How do we replicate that yeah. atmosphere? Yeah. It, it, it starts uh, very early. And, and one of the things I'd, I'd like to see more happening in my country um, is that people feel about becoming entrepreneurs um, or learn about that at school as early as possible. And that's what I've been trying to you know, tell and somehow not teach, I don't like teach, but uh, inspire my kids with. 
is to that creating your job is much better than than trying to find a job. And not everybody can do it. And sometimes you fail and it's more risky and so on. But uh, that's, you know, it, it's um, the startup of you. But Reid Hoffman's book, the founder of, uh, of, of LinkedIn, that's what it is. You manage your life like a startup. And you're, you are a startup yourself. And I think that's what we should teach. So it starts really early. And I think in Europe in general, it doesn't start early enough. But people don't know they can do that. They, they think it's complicated. They think it's, it's for other people. They think they will never, you know, be able to do it. They... They, they think they have to, you know, be submissive to, to a boss or a CEO or, you know, and no, they can be the CEO. They, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a thousand employees. It can be just you and, and how many people just thrive and, and succeed by, uh, by being a one person company. And that, that's the point. And I think that's the key thing is, uh, one is the, the, uh, the spirit, the, the way people think in, in Europe. I think, um, that they, they, they're not, they don't know they can do it. And the earlier we teach them, the best. Two, as a failure is not, you know, not a problem. And uh, it's not, of course, it's better if you succeed. But, uh, but I, I think you get more experience. And I'm never ashamed of something I failed because I tried. Uh, three, English is a problem in France. And that's not popular to say. But um, uh, in France and in, in all, all over Europe, the fact that we are in our own language puts us in a box which is, it's, it's, it's not always bad, of course, but sometimes you, you have to, you start with, um, a, a startup which is focusing on, on France only. By the time you do that and succeed in France and you own France, maybe, or Germany or Spain, by the way, it's the same. Um, you have someone in Silicon Valley that who does it with more funding, b- bigger market, um, hundreds of millions, you know, of, of potential users instead of your, the country and, and, and then becomes bigger and buys you or kills you. So English is one what, what, which I think children should learn and not learn like, you know, in school English, like learn, uh, to, to just be able to speak. I'm not saying fixing accents because as you can see, mine is gone. It will never be fixed. I actually <laughs> like it. <laughs> but that's another one uh, where it's very important, I think, for the European ecosystem to... It's like TCPIP for the internet, right? You need to, to have the same language somehow. And it's English today. Maybe it's Chinese in a few years. Yeah. Um, maybe, right? yeah. And you just watch when uh, we go on the air and say, you know, Americans, you ought to learn Chinese. You think the French react badly. <laughs> right. And then we talked about it, but it's investments. Uh, you know, then it's probably the government should help, or, you know, uh, having money flow to startups. And that is something that has to be, you know, helped somehow uh, or not, you know, tax 75%. Right. As At least we not prevented. Yeah, right. exactly. exactly. I have to say, though, I mean, I agree with you that uh, kids should be taught that it's best to create your own job. And, but I don't think we do a good job here in the U.S. of teaching kids that either. Not yet. But we do have like these heroes, these folk heroes like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg. And I think kids, some kids, the right kids, look to those guys and go, wow, I want to I wanna do that. You know? and I was about to say, Leo, if you walk in Silicon Valley, all, all the kids here want to become the right. next Zuckerberg, yeah. right? You can feel that. You can feel that. I agree. Yeah. And so that is something that is pretty easy to fix in Europe. And I think the UK has Richard Branson. Uh, as you know, as the face, um, and and in I think in France it lacks a little bit. I, we were talking about the Grand École system, and like the stars of France are more like um, I don't know, you know, you know, the, the head of LVMH, like heads of large companies, right? Right. right. And, and so Bureau- bureaucrats. It's changing. No, 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 those are not bureaucrats. I have okay. respect for them, but they they. Um, it's changing, though. You have free Xavier Niel, you have Jacques Antoine Grandjean, Van, Van Privé. I won't, I won't do name dropping here, but many entrepreneurs who succeeded and stayed in France, and now they invest in hundreds of startups. So it's it's changing all over Europe. It's just very slow. What what do you do though that, to convince people that entrepreneurship is a good thing? Because I think one of the reasons seventy five percent tax sounds so popular, and Halan may have succeeded because of that is that people think, well, yeah, the rich people haven't been paying their share. They've been hoarding it. It Trickle down doesn't work. I don't see that money. What are the benefits of entrepreneurship to convince people that we need to to create that that sort of atmosphere? 
Well, creating jobs is one, right? Uh, most of the jobs created are coming from small, small businesses. And I was joking about the Zynga building being three blocks away from me, but three and a half thousand jobs being created in San Francisco in two years or something. It's funny. Facebook. It's funny because that used to be the tech TV We building. used to work in that building. <laughs> and so we associate it with losing jobs. Lots but. of jobs lost on that one. But anyway. Facebook, 4,000 jobs. And Twitter, how many thousands? And, you know, it's like... So, you know, if it's not obvious, I don't know what you should do. Either you try to protect the past, and I, I think that's, that's one of the problems in France and other yeah. countries, is you, you're sort of focusing on protecting the past and, and unions and working less and, 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 you know, don't lose your job. And, and I understand people are in some pe many people are in trouble, and we need to help that, of course. But the problem is I just focus on that and not on making the new you know, like huge industry sector that is happening with the tech, the tech sector is huge. It's going to be massive. Look at Apple, look at Amazon and, and so on. And they don't think this way. So I think it's a generation issue that probably politicians will have to wait the next, for the next Maybe. generation. Yeah. So uh, what happened at Seismic? Uh, it, it didn't work as I expected, Leo. Um, we no, we have been. I've been trying really hard. Um, we we started as a as a, um, uh, a, a video conversation, uh, which might be somehow. This is why I like Google Hangouts because five years ago you were right. You were right. I, you were just too early. I, I don't know. I think it's actually too early still. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. yeah, because people don't like like if you see me right now. I you see, this way it's okay. I kind of. But if you look at me from the side, I'm ridiculous. I'm talking to a camera alone. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and that feels very weird to most right. people. They don't like their image. They don't like to talk into a camera. I think that's so exactly you, right. And, and so, Tom, and, and you, Leo, you, you are and I am um, exceptions in the fact that we, we're not shy doing that. We don't give a damn about, like, see my hair? You know, it's really nice, right, today? <laughs> so it's <laughs> good. It's well, well maintained. Uh, so that was my mistake was a human a factor that uh, the technology worked pretty well. It was, it was, of course, not the same quality as Google Hangouts and what we get today on Skype. But it's, um, it was the beginning. And uh, I think we created social connections with people. What I like with video is I, I can learn so much better about you by seeing you. Yes. I have the feelings. I, it's like we meet, basically. It's so much better than tech. So what I wanted to do with Sysmic, it's more like, you know, like the talk shows you have on TV where people debate. It can be politics, can be anything, but on online. And you're doing that with tweet. And that's amazing. This is why I'm such, such a fan of, of your team uh, and, and your, what you do, Leo. But I was trying to give that to more people with Sysmic. And that failed just not for technology, I think, because we're more way too early. And I think it's still too early today because people need to get used to speak in video. So we, we capped at like 100,000 users. Uh, I raised a lot of money. Uh, my investors and I, I have to say, were in into let's do something big or or not, and then move on. Right. You know, it's the two choices you have if you start a company. Either you start as you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to be a small business. I'm going to break it even, uh, and that's the web. So I have I have two in my. You know, the web is break even. Uh, slightly profitable, uh, no investors, belongs to us. It's like a grocery shop. It's, it's very small. And that's one model. The other model is you want to build the next Instagram. You want 50 million users and maybe you sell it for a billion. Uh, that's fashionable these days, right? You sell for a billion. <laughs> Seems to be, yeah. Or you fail. <laughs> right, right. And so, so that I wanted to do that. I still want to do that. I'll probably try, keep trying all my life doing that. Not to sell it for a billion. That doesn't make, you know, much difference. It's more like to, make a massive service that reaches millions of people. I would really like to do that. And so that didn't work with video. I tried something else. Guess what? I'm giving you a two minute speech here. Twitter. Great. I was, as you know, I still have a lot of passion, a huge passion for Twitter. When it started, I was like, all right, my video thing is not taking off. I talked to my investors. Do you want, you know, that we stop here, distribute the money or should we move on? Find something else. Here is Twitter growing. Shall we pivot? I can do that. Four weeks. You know, we're it was we're amazing. It was amazing. And you know what? The Seismic client is still one of my favorite desktop <laughs> clients and iPhone clients and Android clients. You did a it's great very, job. <laughs> thank you. It's very popular on Android. It's really and, good on Android. And so, I, as a seller, I would say I had a lot of tailwinds. I'm not trying to escape my responsibility, but a lot of uh, tailwinds, a lot of headwind. Mm. And Twitter suddenly decided. Clients like us were not, 
you know, basically so important anymore. And they acquired my competitor tweet deck at the time, which was, which was bigger. Uh, but they acquired it and that, that was it basically. It's like, you know, right. they, they started changing things. Um, Twitter, and, Twitter uh, put you out of business basically. I wouldn't say that. I took my responsibility. I tried, I, many people I've tried on Facebook. You remember all those, uh, companies like, uh, what is it? Slide, Rock you. They, mm -hmm. they lost. 10 million users in one day right. when Facebook decided to, right. uh, to change their strategy, right? right. Not them, uh, let them post. Well, it is a, it's a good object lesson in building a business around uh, a, an ecosystem around somebody else's somebody business. Somebody else's platform. Right. Yeah. And then I tried on Salesforce. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I was like, all right, Twitter didn't work. Move on. You know, again. And, and uh, for, for some other reasons that didn't work either, um, and you see, I keep my smile, right? Why, why not? You are a sailor. You keep tacking with the wind. <laughs> Isn't there. it great? Yeah. <laughs> and so now here I am back to social. Um, you had along the way, you'd acquired ping.fm. Yes. So we're focusing on that just because there are hundreds of thousands of users there monetizing it, making it really good. You should try Sysmic Ping. It's, it's just let you post. That's all it does, but it does it in a very nice way. You can post to groups. Uh, you can uh, have great mobile apps. And we're doing that with a much reduced team. And I had to go through the worst a CEO can do is let go. Must be as horrible. Saying. Must be and horrible. And so, so I thought I should um, try to do it differently. Clearly not like the way it uh, generally happens in France where there's a fight with unions. And, and so I decided to uh, uh, blog the, uh, with the approval of the employees, 15 or 16 people, very sad, uh, blog their LinkedIn TVs tweet it um and that got 300 plus retweets and and it's ask for friends do you who wants a great engineer team so um, cool. have too many and that got spread really like wildfire and people uh may uh, most of them got up to 15 um offers can you believe it um and wow. they found a job in two weeks and so that was pretty cool fantastic well it's fantastic too that you didn't say oh i'm sorry you guys are having a hard time finding a job but you know that's that's the breaks you went the extra mile like let's let's try something here and and something that i think in hindsight a lot of people say oh well you you tweet and then people respond but going into that i'm sure it wasn't a walk you weren't certain that you were going to get this response right no and it's 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 the most difficult to do for a ceo uh and, and most, you know, most people won't talk about it. You hide it, right? You, you're trying not to. It's humiliating. It's sh right. yeah. Like, look at me today on your show. Are you fantastic with me? We talk about politics. Now we're talking <laughs> about how I fail. Because you you're doing so such a good job. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, the web is very successful. So I don't only, you know, uh, fail. <laughs> you know what, Louis? Everybody loves Louis Lemur, and it's partly because you are. Uh, open and, and self-effacing and great and you know who wouldn't just think the world of you i thank you leo but I, about failure i think it's very interesting and then there will be a next move for me um apart oh, from you know just what you're a winner everybody knows that and i'm sure that raising money is not going to be an issue for you and well, it's, uh, it's uh, funny that you even know, in the startup community where everyone says oh no you got to fail faster and failing is good right. when you fail everyone seems to want to clamp down and say oh well i don't want to hide that failure and so you're just you're, you're practicing what you preach i think you should actually expose it and yeah. people help you and uh, a lot of you know opportunities will appear from it but i you know i, I think I, what I like to, the problem is you, people have to understand what's your goal. If my goal is to build a profitable business day one, I don't do something like that. I do something else. Right. I do something like the web and it takes eight years to right. do it. Right. Um, and if I want to do like an Instagram, then I have to try a lot of different things. I have to be very ambitious. I have to, 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 to do it very differently and you have to have on board investors that get that as well. So, for example, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, so we're very focusing on seismic ping and we want to fix it. Uh, it's fixed. It's, it's, I think, really good now, but I mean, monetize it. I, that's my hope that we can, you know, reach break even or near break even with that. But then, basically, I'd like to keep launching products because I like to do that and see what sticks, you know, and what Kevin was, was doing before joining Google, by the way, which is, you know, launch milk. Does it take off? No, I kill it. Boom. I go yeah. to the next one. He and, said he was going to do that. He said, we're yeah. going to iterate fast. We're going to move fast till we find something that works. And as long as your investors are on board with that, if you talk, to, I, was, I was talking, I, I think without uh, 
uh, you know, disclosing secrets here. Reid Hoffman is, is, is a fan of LinkedIn, is one of my very good friends. We're talking about this. And he was saying, you know, that's just the investor life anyway. Right. If they invest in 50 things, there are like just two or three that really matter at the end. So they, they know that. It's a hit, it's a hit uh, based industry, you know. You have, every, you, have you have to try. You have to try all the time. You but, fail, it's okay. You, you keep moving. By the just, way, Loic you know, was an early investor in LinkedIn. And so he's probably not feeling too bad. Right it, it, I, I'm okay. I, I'm surviving. <laughs> it makes up for a lot of things. Uh, yeah. So, um, Le Web, London. Yes. This is the first time. Yes. Right before the Olympics. Are you coming? You didn't invite me. Oh, come on. Sarah is coming. I told Sarah, of course, you're all welcome. And, oh. oh, Sarah didn't tell me we we're all welcome. <laughs> She cleverly didn't mention I, that. I, I might have uh, forgot to mention because it's so obvious to me. You're kind of part of the walls at the web. Um, no, no, but, that's all right because we're going, we're, I, we're going to go to Paris. But She's planning uh, on ending David Cameron's reign. So Yeah, well, and that, since Sarah and MG are going to be there, I figure we've got a team there. So we'll let Leo, we'll if let you want to go. come, uh, I'd like you there. I'm sorry that I didn't uh, send it. He, here's what happens with the web. is basically Jarlene and myself doing everything. I know, it's you crazy. Know. What you do is crazy. And, and, so, and by the way... You've already, I mean, you've, 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 has it sold out? I mean, you've, it's already a, an instant success, right? We, we sold out in partners, which um, is true Fantastic. entrepreneurship here because we finance everything ourselves. And, uh, and you know, the web London is, is, is quite an investment. So we took, you know, uh, risk there. And just a month and a half ago when we launched, we had no partners. And, uh, and, and two weeks ago, right? we sold out in partners. Boom. We have. Nothing. And Impossible. you've got great speakers. I know I've seen the list. If you go to lewweb.co, you can see it at the bottom of the page there. You can see who's going to be speaking. There's no chance you can get us a, a, an offer code or anything for Twit uh, viewers for Lewweb. Sure. I'm going to create it as soon as we stop. It's going to be TWIT. Okay. And uh, let's see. Uh, we can give you uh, – I'm going to do something, uh, something, uh, something wild here. Geraldine will, will kick my butt. Uh, we, we, we can give you the startup price. Which is basically half the price wow. for a certain wow. period of time. So usually, um, uh, now it's not good yet. What Loic has to get off the air with us in a few minutes. Right. It'll be good. And yeah, the, the offer code hour. Twit. If you're in London, uh, this is coming up June 19th and 20th. I have to say, Loweb Paris. We've gone twice now. Is just so much fun. The spirit there, the energy, what you learn. And what, do, what do people get out of it? What, what do, if somebody's like, okay, I'm interesting, but tell me a little more. What, what's it going to be like? So it's something I didn't mention as a factor of success is in, be inspired um, by success. And I, let me give you an example of what's happening in London in June 19th, 20th. We have, um, uh, you heard about Pebble Watch, yeah. right? Huge right. Kickstarter success. Nine million dollars. They've got ten, ten. today. Ten. Wait, it just keeps going. Nine up. yesterday. <laughs> They're doing a million a day. I bought okay. one, and I'm glad I got one because yeah, I, right. I can't get them. Five. They're sold out. I bought five. Oh, you're smart. Uh, and and for the family. And um, so this is huge because this is a way that you can fund a company oh, yeah. with ten million dollars without raising funding from VCs. No dilution. No, you know, no one to, 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 to ask money from except your customers that you have to make happy. Right. And I think that's amazing. So I, I emailed them two days ago and we had a, a nice call. They're coming. They're going to do the first public speech uh, of, about their success at the web. And that's what you get from the web. You get inspired by success of others. And they're going to explain how you can raise $10 million dollars without any VC, without an angel. And, that. and that's, that's insane. So I'm so, super happy to have them. We're going to have a, so that's, that's what you get. You get to, to meet with business angels, lots of press. We'll have lots of, you know, product launches there. Uh, other startups, uh, we, you have brands that you can partner with. Nike is coming, Kraft is coming. A lot of brands that startups want to talk to either for advertising or to, to, you know, just to, to make deals uh, with them. And another highlight will be a session uh, between uh, Silicon Valley against Europe, which is a theme always, right? Yeah. So we have Uber, Travis, uh, who, and his uh, VC, Sharvin Pichevar, against um, uh, Jay, who is behind Hello, which is like the equivalent of Uber in uh, Europe, raised more than $20 million from wow. Excel. Wow. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. 
Wow. It is. A, it's a fun conference. You can't say Olympics, of course, because that would you know they would come down on us. They but have nothing to do with it the Olympics. It certainly is some sort of competitive a big thing in yes. London. <laughs> it does have something to do with the web because uh, it's the, it's actually Cameron's team that uh, contacted us and uh, UKTI. Oh. Wow. Um, so which, they wanted yeah. you to come to London. Yep. That's great. Because it's the year of the Olympics, so they want uh, you know everything to happen in London. And we thought, we thought it was awesome, and they helped us in an immense way. They are very, very entrepreneur-friendly uh, there. That's fantastic. Luik, you're a runner. You're a pilot. I don't know how you have time to do. You run Le Web, You run Seismic. And you're, uh, I think, this, this great ambassador for entrepreneurialism. I don't know how you have time to do this. And then, of course, there's the politics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we haven't talked about it enough. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Hold on a second. We've got more with Louis Lemur coming up on Triangulation. This show brought to you by our friends at Audible.com. You know, it's funny because Audible's been around now. I've been a member since 2000, so it's, it's more than 10 years. And uh, But I remember this was an early startup. This was like... Wow, because I used to get books on tape in a cardboard box with, with 20 cassettes in it. And I thought, wow, what a great idea. Do this on the web, and you could download it right away. Um, when they first started, they had a handful of books. You know, they've come a long way. I mean, it really is wonderful. Uh, now an Amazon company. Audible has more than 100,000 titles. They're recording more all the time. They have nine of their own recording studios in their headquarters in Newark, New Jersey. They have nine recording studios. One of the things they're doing is recording... Uh, classic science fiction that never got made into audiobooks. And I know for Sword and Laser, that's oh, yeah. a big so deal it's for you. I yeah. mean, it's much more surprising to find that a book isn't there than the Now opposite. it is. Yeah. It's changed completely. It's almost like, oh, yeah, of course you're going to find it. Hyperion, Dan Simmons is our current pick mm -hmm. for Sword mm -hmm. and Laser. Absolutely. And, a, and, and an ensemble cast recording, not just some guy. Oh, I love it. those. They're Mark doing more of those. is on there. Yeah. Uh, it's great. It's great. When I first started uh, on Audible, there was one Stephen King novel. Now all of them. Yeah, all of them, including the they stand, had an exclusive. Finally. Yep, yeah. the stand and the brand new one that just came out, the new uh, Dark Tower. Uh, I just could go. Oh, this is good. A new Augustine Burroughs. That looks kind of interesting. This is how it's called. Jennifer Conley, the uh, Colin show. Firth. Oh, these are like getting A-list recording guys. So this is one of the things they do. They have some of the best actors in the world doing these readings. So they really come alive for you. Some amazing books on here. This is how. Proven aid in overcoming shyness, molestation, fatness, spinsterhood, grief, disease, luxury, decrepitude, and more for young and old alike. This guy wrote Running with Scissors, which is amazing. And uh, I think this is probably fiction, not an actual self-help book. <laughs> he says, how to feel like crap, how to ride in an elevator, how to be thin, how to be fat, how to find love, how to feel sorry for yourself. Anyway, it's an unself help book. <laughs> uh, I just, I love his writing. I don't know if you read uh, Running With Scissors. It's, it's very heavy, but very wonderful. Audible.com. Here's the deal. I'm going to get you a book free, so pick wisely, because this is your way to, uh, here's the new Stephen Colbert just came out. He did I'm an American, and so can you. Now he's doing I'm a Pole, and so can you. <laughs> not not a Polish person, an actual an actual pole. pole. Yeah. This must be a joke. Narrated by Tom Hanks. This must be a joke. <laughs> and Stephen Colbert. It's, it's, a, it's, an it's only $1.95. I wouldn't use one of your credits on this one. Use something bigger. Mr. Tom Hanks. By the way, we only have the studio for about four minutes, so uh, keep it. Oh, patient. geez. Okay, okay gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of stuff I know I'm not even going to play anymore just go to audible.com actually go to audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation sign up for the gold account don't download that buy that one it's a buck 95 download something like the stand that's you know like you're going to get 48 hours of amazing I'm in listening I'm in the middle of the stand oh my god it's good and when you listen to it you're in it you're the it comes alive I listen at work at the gym on the way to driving I, I drive carpool just so I can listen to more audible audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. A great book is waiting for you there. Sign up for the gold count. You can cancel any time, pay nothing. Uh, Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother. Boy, there was a book that got me uh, all head up. And the author, Amy Chu, reads it. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Um, I just go on and on. I don't know how you're going to pick that first book, but do give it a try, and I know you'll be hooked. audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation look at uh, this is interesting Martin Sheen and Emilio Estevez have written a book 
they narrate it together about mm-hmm. being father and son. Oh, wow. Does that not sound interesting? Yeah, that does. A dual memoir? Wow. I mean, I, you know, this is, it's like going to the best bookstore in the world and then go, oh, I want that. I want that. Audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. Loic Lemur is our guest, the creator of Seismic, b- very famous French blogger uh, who still blogs today, and I always enjoy reading your posts. Uh, he is the founder of Le Web, Le Web, both Le Web France and now Le Web London. Um, what is, what would you, okay, you've accomplished so much, Louis. What do you want to do next? Um, let's say, let's say this, you sell Le Web, some big company comes along, gives you a ton of money. Oh, you have a, is that, do you have your checkbook with you? No, I'll buy it. I got a buck fifty right here. No, some great company comes and buys it. Would it would go very well with Tweet. It you would. Know, you, could, you could make it the Tweet. We've conference. actually wanted to do conferences. Great. And uh, then I and much, then I saw about, and then I saw how crazy you and Geraldine are at the end of the web, and I thought, no. You know, Leo, <laughs> I would trade you the web shares for Tweet shares. No, no problem. We can talk. Oh, about well, it. we could do a little bit, a little bit of tit for tat. That we could do that. Let's <laughs> we could. God, I believe in the web. It's it's an amazing event. Same here. So, I know you're building for long term. I love thank it. Thank you. We well, God, it's the only choice really because <laughs> we didn't get that billion dollar offer. So we're building the business. Um, but let's say uh, you know you, you you got some free time. What would you like to do next? Have you thought about no. this? Yeah, I am thinking about it, you know, right now because um, I, uh, even though you know what, so what I do with the web is super exciting as as a platform, and uh, and it, it gets me in touch with amazing people, and I'm I'm trying to help entrepreneurs, and it does help them. So that's really exciting. However, as a business, it's it's really bad. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's I'm not complaining. It break even, breaks even, you know, and 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 change then that we can invest. Well, in that case, I take back the offer of shares. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, but it's not you know it doesn't scale. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It, you Just want like to do web, Yeah, you do the web London, you start all over again. You know, it's yeah. a lot of right. And uh, so it's 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 a very fun business, but it's not a it cannot be an Instagram. That's what I mean. You know, and, um, and, and, and so I, I still think I'd like to build something, uh, big, you know, like uh, read millions of users, yeah. uh, really massive global, you know, and the web is global. Um, I think it's, it's important in, in its community that it helps people, but it's, uh, it's not, um, you know, it's not huge. <laughs> it's, uh, some people think it's big, but I, I don't think that way. So I, I'll probably give it, give a shot. And you know, I'd like actually to probably launch a lot of different things instead of, uh, you know, doing, doing one long term is try fail fast. If it doesn't work really fast and probably, you know, even faster than what I have done and, and launch five, six, 10 products. Do, over two years, right? Kind of, kind of like the milk thing. Yeah, I, I like the model, and Kevin has uh, has been, you know, very inspiring to me on, on this. And and then you hit one, but you know, then you stick to that. Right. But uh, that's probably what I I was thinking about becoming an investor myself. I'm not really an angel. I, I did a few things. You mentioned one, um, and uh, but uh, I I'm not you know I I'm not sure I can be passive. I'm more like someone who likes to build things. And definitely not like slowing down because uh, otherwise life is boring. You have to, you have to build, you have to create, and uh, and I have a passion for technology that is nowhere ending. So Southwest Airlines comes says we need somebody for the <laughs> for pilot. the Phoenix Dallas Hall. You're not you gonna that's, you're not gonna jump right for that yet. You know that's a, that's another sucky business. It's Brunson who said uh, there is a way you can become a billionaire with an airline is by being a billion, uh, be, become a millionaire by being a billionaire before that. Right? <laughs> Buying an airline, yeah. There's uh, a, but I think you love to fly because I've seen some amazing uh, stuff from. Yeah, I've been, from you. I've been, I've been, I'm a private pilot. I've been yeah. flying for uh, ten years uh, as a passion. Um, yeah. And uh, what yeah, got I, you into I, flying? It, it seems it, not that it's. It, I mean, flying is great, but it seems like. Talk about a pivot from from being a tech entrepreneur to to a, being a pilot. Is it is it just a pastime or? No, it's very similar actually. Okay. <laughs> what what is similar? You have it's to look complex. ahead. It's complex. You need yeah. to look ahead, as yeah. you said. Yeah. You need to plan ahead uh, if anything fails and things fail. Uh, you don't know that, but there are airlines that have uh, windshield breaking, not opening, but cracking. 
and you don't know, but right. it happens every right. day and nothing happens, right? I mean, they, they manage. So pilots are trained for that. They That's go amazing. into simulators, they get fire put at them, they have to, you know, do an emergency descent. And this is all good training because when you have to do an emergency descent in a business, you know, this is good, good training. So no, it's it just, I, I like to drive. You know, if you're, if you're in a plane, you can be in the back or you can drive. Yeah. And I, I, I like to drive. I drive my business. I drive my life. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm a sailor. I'm a, I, I, at business school, uh, at, I should say I was the skipper of, uh, of a racing boat of the school. I have a, <laughs> something which is not in my Wikipedia, but I, I scored in the you know, top five um, um, sailor in, when I was a wow. teenager. You seem uh, like a sailor to me for some reason. I, There's something about I, you. It feels like a, an old salt. I drive. Look, I drive. Sometimes I fail, and that's okay. When you so sailing is actually a really good example as well. Is you go, you have to compose with the elements all the time. With wind, you cannot go into the wind, right? You have to, you have to, you know. I don't know the term in English. How do you call that? You know, when you can't go straight because Ta the wind. Tack. Tack. Yeah, tacking. Thank you. Yes, I know it in French, not in English, because yeah. I don't do it anyway. So you know, same with a plane. If you go too slow, you're going to fall. <laughs> but right. if you go too fast, you're going to exceed the maximum speed of the plane. You're going to break your wings or whatever. Right. You see what I mean? So it's it's a lot of uh, you have to watch for traffic. Uh, same in on a sailboat. You you go. For, I went. I, I flew into a thunderstorm once, and I, I can tell you, I learned a lot there. So then, when you do that, you can do any, anything. Can happen to your startup. You know, you're like, all right, well, it's not life-threatening, right? Yeah, so. I'm not going to sink. I'm not going to fall out of the sky. It makes a difference. Are you an adrenaline junkie? Yeah, I, I have to admit that. I uh, so that's that's why you know. So I, I did free fall as well. Oh, jeez, Louise! Of course you did. <laughs> yeah, I have a YouTube video with my uh, my free fall. You can see I'm like this. <laughs> yeah, when you fall, your your speed is so fast. I decided though, after ten jumps that that this was a little pushing it. I do kite surfing, uh, which another reason why I love San Francisco because you can go. Like uh, at 5 p.m. in Chrissy Fields uh, oh, behind yeah. Golden Gate Bridge and start kite surfing. So I do that, and and you know running a marathon like I run the New York Marathon twice is uh, is an amazing experience. You have a whole city belongs to you, people cheering you up, oh, and and it's tough on you. It's tough on your body, um, but it's uh, it's adrenaline really. Like your, New York City belongs to you. So now we know what Loic's going to do next. He's going to do one of those squirrel suits. <laughs> right off the bridge. Like that, right yeah. there. Oh, here we go. There he That's is. Me. First and is last, oh, it says. That. Good find. Oh, my God, Louis. I'm opening it myself here. See, uh, that's why. I, are you going, oh, that, that, was, that was training, actually, but but you, you will see in a second I will open it myself. That's and, cool. Uh, but most fun is my face. Oh, actually, <laughs> it, it, this was. So, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're catching the wind in those cheeks there. No You're a brave man, Loic. Is that it's over San fun. Francisco? Look, look, so I'm opening it now. There you go. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I like adrenaline. No, that was in Spain. That's called Emporia Brava. It's wow. uh, not far from where I was born in south of France. Brilliant. Wow. Loic, it's been such a pleasure. I just, uh, I just really enjoy uh, hanging with Loic, and he's just such an inspiration, and he's beloved in Silicon Valley. I don't know anybody who doesn't think the world of Loic Lemaire. So just stay out of politics, and everything's going to be okay. <laughs> Thank you, Leo. I, I think the same of you, and I, 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 I must really apologize that you felt this way about the Web London. So we have to fix it. I didn't feel any way. I just didn't. I said we weren't invited, so we didn't make, we didn't consider it. Uh, I'm not going to invite myself. Okay, but I get I'm not it. that well, kind of guy. Can I still invite you, or is it? No, like it's way too late now. I can't oh. go. But we we probably would have said no anyway because we're uh, this is a bad time for us. Here is what happened, Leo. It was it's very small. It's going to be a third the size of Paris, a thousand people instead of three and a half thousand people. So we don't really have a space to do a studio and so on. It's and fine. I, I don't I worry was, about it. I, I thought I would serve you badly, but I should have told no, you that. Louis. I should have told you you can't, you know, because it's I, not going to be as good as Paris. I didn't even think twice about it. Sarah's going to be there, and, and you've already invited and us she, to Paris, and we're going to right. Paris. In fact, if I don't go to Paris every December, I, I don't know what I'll do. Wonderful. So Paris is four, five, six of December. You're That's another great, great one. If you're in, the, if you're in Vegas, uh, Paris, tell you, is what you, you got to go. 
Uh, it's really great to talk to you, Luik. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Tom and Neil, for uh, having me. Luke that was Adler. fun. Thank you, Luik. Great to talk to you. Ping.fm. Actually, go to seismic.com and you can get their new Ping client. And that lets you uh, cross-post. If only Google Plus would have a freaking right API. <laughs> yeah. Right? Golly. Yeah. I hope it's coming for Google I.O. I hope. I'm Glad praying it. because other, you know, then I would use this and I could post, I could post now to my Twitter accounts, my Facebook pages, uh, and if ping. I, and ping, and if it would only just add Google Plus, there we would be. See, look, it's post all of these. I could schedule them. It's really great. I mean, this is a really neat way to do it. I was using ping way back in the bug yeah. cloud days because yeah. it allowed me to post all the things at once that I was going yeah. live. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And now it's uh, so it's on iPad uh, as a full native app on iPad. Oh, that's neat. On, on iPhone, on Android, uh, as a desktop client, a web client, and I, I think I think it's really good now. You you should try it. I love it. Thank you, Louis Lemur. Thank you, Leo. And thank you all for joining us. We do triangulation on Wednesdays, right about four p.m. Pacific, Leo. seven p.m. Yes. Sorry, the code tweet is up. Jarlene did it while we were doing oh, the show. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. T W I T. And you go to uh, leweb.co, uh, London. And then you, you, if you try to register, you put the tweet code T W I T. It will give you the startup price, which is 50% off. Oh, that's but great. But please don't tell anyone. We might not be able to do that the whole time because it's below our production cost. Just, just, just people who are watching right now and turn it off tomorrow. And I'm sorry that I have interrupted you, but that wasn't important. And I do hope you're not sleeping on the couch tonight. Geraldine, we're sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Loic. <laughs> Geraldine's great. Geraldine runs the web and is amazing, truly amazing. Um, triangulation is uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on uh, Twitter. That's 2300 UTC every Wednesday. But if you can't watch live, I do like you to watch live because we can see the chat room and everything and it gives us some great feedback. But you can always download it after the fact in audio and video at uh, at twit.tv or uh, on iTunes or everywhere else. Tom Merritt is, uh, of course, Mr. TNT Tech News Today every Monday through Friday. Legally changed again. my name. Mr. Mr. TNT. TNT. He is dynamite. That's right. Dynamite. <laughs> And uh, he uh, will be back tomorrow. Uh, now, you're doing frame right now on Tuesdays. Tuesday mornings at, at 10 a.m. Pacific. 10 a.m. So, so I saw somebody saying, oh, I hope they go back to the old time. That's permanent. Yeah. Well, that's the new time. permanent as anything is as, in yeah, life. It's the new time. So frame rate's a great show to watch. Somebody said, yesterday, uh, today on Twig said, you should do a, Jeff Jarvis uh, yeah, said, you no, should I do a TV that. show. I, I said, was, like, well, I was listening to that. I was like, I need to get Jarvis on frame rate. <laughs> yeah, of there course. you go. Yeah. He reviewed TV shows. That really would be great. Anyway, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Triangulation.